This is how tiny this insulin needle is. It is not sufficient to cause wounds in anybody's body because it goes into what we call the subcutaneous level, just under the skin, under the skin, just goes under the skin, which I would show you in a minute. My dad was an insulin and just before he died, I stopped his insulin. I didn't want him to get any wounds in the stomach and I didn't want him to actually have complications because of the wounds in the stomach. So the best thing that my family and I did was to stop his insulin. That is a statement someone made while making a social media post about his dad. Now may the father of that person rest in peace. This post is not to tear anybody down. We respect the lives of people who have gone because of complications of diabetes. However, we need to burst the myth around insulin and giving insulin. So today I'm going to talk to you about insulin. I'm going to show you an insulin pen and I'm going to show you what the needle of an insulin does. And I have what we call a pretend stomach and how the needle goes into the stomach and therefore does not cause wounds. Hi, my name is Tonya Burrow. I'm a senior diabetes pharmacist and I look after people with type one, type two, all manner of diabetes. I've been a pharmacist for 17 years and counting, and I've been a diabetes pharmacist for the last 10 years. So my experience is growing, but I've seen all types of diabetes. I started people on insulin. I have maintained people on insulin and I continue to do that. So I sit here with authority to talk to you about what I'm about to talk to you about. Remember, we said we're not here to negate anybody's story, but we're here to clarify a couple of things that are being said so that people have an understanding of what they need to do and an understanding of what insulin is all about. So let's go back to the beginning. If you missed any of the videos, please go back and watch them. We talked about the pancreas, which is an organ in the body. And the job of the pancreas or one of the jobs of the pancreas is to produce insulin. Now the insulin that is produced by the pancreas helps the glucose to move around the body. It distributes it to the brain, the eyes, and every part of the body that the glucose needs to go. So what happens if your pancreas is not working? It means that insulin cannot be produced. And if insulin is not being produced, we cannot get glucose to be going all around the body. And if this glucose is not going all around the body, it just means that the glucose in your bloodstream gets higher and higher and higher and has nowhere to go. An increase in blood glucose in the bloodstream can lead to complications. And that's why we treat diabetes, whether type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, or the other types of diabetes that people will have with either tablets or insulin, depending on what their body needs. As a quick recap, I'm going to talk about type 1 diabetes as well as type 2 diabetes. Now, in type 1 diabetes, they are completely insulin dependent, means that their pancreas is not working at all. Kaput, gone, okay? The pancreas is not working at all. Insulin is not produced. Blood sugar levels is high. Sometimes they present with severe symptoms or what we call diabetic ketoacidosis, which is another topic for another day. Now, people that live with type 1 diabetes, they depend on insulin. So they need two types of insulin, one to help them when they're about to eat and another one that stays constant through the day. That is a brief recap of type 1 diabetes. In type 2 diabetes, different things are going on. Genetic factors, insulin resistance. We have covered all of that in the other episodes. If you've missed it, please go back and watch it. If you've got any questions, please feel free to ask and I will go over it again. In type 2 diabetes, we can often start with tablets and then we go one tablet and then we add another one and another one. We're not doing this because we have a deal with pharmaceutical companies, no way. We're doing this because your body is possibly not responding to the tablets that we're using to treat your diabetes. And as a result, we need to add medications that would work on different parts of the body to get the glucose to where they need to go. There are certain times in people who live with type 2 diabetes that we have to add in insulin. We either give them what we call a basal insulin, which means that it's insulin that goes into the body and it's a little bit like a tap. It trickles and trickles and trickles through the day. Some of them last for 12 hours in the day, some 18, some longer. Whatever type of insulin you need, if you get to that stage where you need insulin, the type of insulin that you need is discussed with your healthcare professional. Please do not go and buy insulin over the counter and say that you are type 2 diabetes because I know there are certain parts of the world where insulin can often be bought over the counter. Do not do that. Now we've covered type 1 and type 2. 
There are other types of diabetes which we have covered in other episodes. Now let's talk about insulin. What then happens if your body is not producing the insulin that it requires? It means that we have to come in with an external insulin. It will say to your pancreas, relax, I'm here. In cases of type 1 diabetes, the external insulin will say, don't worry pancreas, we're going to help to do the job that you were supposed to do. We understand that you cannot work anymore. In type 2 diabetes, some people have some form of functionality of their pancreas the pancreas is producing insulin but the insulin being produced is not sufficient enough to get their glucose to where they need to go are you following me are you now what we do is when we introduce insulin into the body as an external factor the insulin says relax i got you pancreas i'm here to give their body the insulin that it requires so that it gets to where it needs to go. Now, when we start you on insulin, I'm not going to talk about how we start you on insulin because that needs to be talked about with your healthcare professional. I've got an insulin pen, covered it up because this is not specific to any brand. I'm just using this as a demo pen. We also have the needle. I'm going to show you what the insulin needle looks like. I've also got your sharp spin. This is a sharp spin where once you're done injecting yourself, the needle goes into this sharp spin. And last but not least, we're going to be using this as a demonstration of your stomach or the body part that we've asked you to inject this insulin into. Now let's talk about the insulin pen. When you get your insulin pen, we always tell you as healthcare professionals that you need to put the pen in the fridge. Usually they come in a pack of five. Once you get your pack of five, you need to store the insulin in the fridge in the what in the fridge you get the pack of five you pick it up from your pharmacy you bring it home you put it in the fridge okay now once that's in the fridge and you're ready to use the insulin you bring one pen at a time out you don't bring all five pens you take one out of the pack and you bring it out now this is one of those pens okay once you've brought out the insulin from the fridge. Usually some people say keep it 15 minutes or rub it this way. We advise that you keep it up to 15 minutes because sometimes when it's cool and it gets into the body, for some people it might sting, but you can use it when it's a little bit cool, but you might want to keep it out for 15 minutes or up to 15 minutes. But if you have a look at this, right? Once you bring it out of the fridge, you check this part of the insulin to ensure that there are no particles in there. It's usually nice and clear, but some it might be slightly cloudy. This is a demo pen. This is not specific to any particular company. Your clinician would have told you how much dose that you need. We actually ask you to prime the insulin so you can see that this insulin pen has got numbers all the way down, right? It's got all the way down. So if you're on 10 units, 20 units, 30 units, You'll be able to dial it up to the number that you actually need. I'm going to show you what an insulin needle looks like. You have what we call the four millimeter needles, the five millimeter needles. In most cases, we only use up to the five millimeter needles, except we have patients who have a bit more flesh in them. We might need to go a little bit more, but usually the four and the five millimeter needles are sufficient to get your insulin into your body. Once you're done with that, you get the needle. So this is the cap of the needle. It's usually a screw on pen. And what we do is we screw this on. The cap comes off. Sometimes it has another cap on here. We take that cap off. If you can see how tiny this needle is, it starts from here and it works its way down here. This is how tiny this insulin needle is. It is not sufficient to cause wounds in anybody's body because it goes into what we call the subcutaneous level, just under the skin under the skin just goes under the skin which i would show you in a minute when you're ready to use your insulin we would normally ask you to prime your insulin which usually means that you dial it up to the number like one or two so this is your stomach we avoid the belly button and then if you can see this i've got the cap here just so i can show you you prime that so that it actually shows that it's working. The reason why we ask you to prime it is so that you're not jamming. Your insulin is not jammed when you're ready to go into the skin. It is not jammed. Okay. Because if it's jammed and you've already injected yourself, you have to come back out and inject yourself again. Once you've primed your insulin, what we're going to do is that we're going to dial it up. So for example, your clinician says to you, you need 
10 units, five units, four units, whatever number of units. You use the dial here to get to the number you've been asked to do. For this, I'm gonna dial up to the number 20. You dial until you get to the number 20. You can see that there's a 20 there. And now you are ready to inject your insulin. This is your stomach. You go at a 90 degree angle and you can see that this is it. And it goes subcutaneously into the body. Once you're ready, you then push that down all the way down and count up to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Or the reverse way. This allows you not to lose any insulin because if you pull it out quite quickly, you would lose some drops of insulin, which might be vital to your diabetes treatment. So for example, if I injected this, right? And I pulled it out quite quickly. You can see there's some drops of insulin being lost. And that's why we tell you to count up to 10 or from 10 to zero. Once you're done injecting, you pull the needle out and then you unscrew this. Then your needle goes into your sharp spin, which is provided for you, depending on what part of the country or the world that you live in. You put this in your sharp spin, and this is kept away from the reach of children because it's used needles. Depending on the part of the world that you're in, once these needles are done, your local council, and this is England, should be able to pick up these needles from you. In other parts of the world, things can operate differently. Once you're done with your insulin, you put the cap back, this insulin is now being used and it's been activated. We do not put this insulin back in the fridge. I repeat, we do not put back the insulin that we have activated and used back in the fridge because it can destroy the properties of the insulin. This can be kept out of the fridge at room temperature, away from direct sunlight, away from the radiator for up to 28 days. Most people go through two or three pens to get their weekly dose. But peradventure, you're on a very small dose of insulin and you don't use up this insulin. After 28 days, you need to discard this insulin. I repeat, discard this insulin pen and get yourself another one. I appreciate that in different parts of the world, people have to buy this insulin so they do not discard it. However, if you use it past the 28 days, there is likelihood that the insulin is not going to work for you. Now, people might need a short-acting insulin or a long-acting insulin. We're going to cover that in another topic. Today was just about me talking to you about insulin, what insulin is for, looking at the insulin pen, and most importantly, looking at the needle. Certain parts of the world, like the gentleman who said that they stopped his father's insulin because he was worried about the father getting wounds. I cannot say it's impossible that certain parts of the world will use an elongated needle that is now going past the subcutaneous level and going into what we call the intramuscular level. The insulin needles that we use for diabetes are only used subcutaneously, not intramuscularly. The size of the needle is very, very little. You can see the inside. It is very tiny. It's so tiny that it shouldn't cause wounds. You can see it here. I'm showing this to you again. That's how tiny the needle is. Once you put it into the skin, it is just a superficial layer that it goes into. You inject it and then that pulls out. Now, I'm not negating the fact that if the father of that gentleman had wounds, wounds are most likely caused by an uncontrolled diabetes level. It means that your blood sugar levels are so high that it's very difficult for your body to heal. The best way for your body to naturally start to get healed is for us to control your blood sugar levels. I hope this has clarified any questions that anybody has. If you've got any comments, any questions, please feel free to put it in the comment section and we'll do our best to answer. Like I said at the start of the video, this video by no means is putting anybody's story down, but it's just to clarify the myth around insulin needles and what damage they could cause. I hope this has helped someone. For more videos like this, like, subscribe, and turn on the notification button. It's always a pleasure bringing this information to you. Once again, see you again another time. Take care. Bye-bye. Keep smiling. Keep your chin up. Diabetes is not the end of the world. Once we understand how to treat it, we would hopefully reduce the complications that can arise from it. Do not be afraid of making contact with your healthcare professionals. We are not the enemy. We're here to help you fight this condition so that you can remain healthy, you can remain without complications where possible, and you can live long and enjoy the time with your family.
Have a great day. See you around another time.